you're watching an AI agent in a browser use another browser completely for free based on a prompt that I gave it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use an AI agent in browser free, completely free, as well as do it locally if you want to. So as you know, there's a big OpenAI operator announcement, which is essentially OpenAI's computer using agent, which is an AI agent which uses the tools available. So an AI which uses the tool of a browser to find stuff out. Now it's $200 a month, so it's pretty pricey. Um, and it only works with certain websites. So it's not that good. If you've seen my previous video, you'll have seen that I actually released how you can use uh, another kind of in-browser AI agent browser use and can even use it with agents like DeepSeek R1, for example, which is pretty cool. But to do it, you have to clone the repo and do it all locally. This one and the reason that browser base or open operator based on browser base is so powerful is because it already exists at the URL. So let's use it and see. So I have here it open up and it is running stuff. Um, but we'll start a new session. But essentially, if we go to the URL here, and also because it's a URL, you can go to a variety of URLs. So from here, you can see that there are a few kind of pre-existing prompts we could use. Let's just try one of these. How much is NVIDIA stock? And then from here, it will process and it will pop open this preview window of the, the browser. And then on the left, you can see the steps that it's going through, which is pretty cool. And up here, you can see that this is indicating that the AI is using the browser, whereas this here means that you can then take control, so you could click on that. So we can see navigates to Google, current page, consent screen. Consent screen is a standard procedure, blah, blah, blah. Accept to reject. And then processing. You can see it opens it up. So you can tell it is a little bit slow, but it's completely free. Oops. That's not me scrolling, by the way. It's all AI scrolling. Oh. Um, but whilst it's doing this, I will say, you kind of need to be wary when you're using something that is free, especially if it's free on browser, where you don't have to put in any API keys, because someone's API key is getting used, and it's running somewhere. So someone's having to pay for the compute power of browser base, but then someone also has to pay for the API key bill. Um, the goal of finding a video stock price has been achieved. The current stock price is displayed as $142. Cool. There you go. And it's as simple as that. And you can have a bunch of these tabs open. You can run them all together, right? Which is cool. But the extra cool part about all of this is that it's an open source project. So you could theoretically figure out how could you get this to run on your own computer. Not just open source the way it is, but then how could you possibly modify it to do the exact needs that you're after? But anyway, as I was saying, basically, if you don't pay for it, guess what? You are the product, which means they're probably selling your data. So I did go to the privacy policy um, and the terms of service. Chucked it into chat GPT. When is it here? Up top. So I pasted it in as like, should I be concerned? Because I watched a guy on YouTube do this exact same tutorial and he put in his username and password. He's like, don't worry, I'll change the password afterwards. But that's not the point. If browser has, browser base has this access right now, it could then just track the changes to passwords maybe. I don't know, seems a bit sus to me. Um, so anyway, they say, yeah, pretty much. You should be cautious when using an AI powered browser and liking it to sensitive information um, because the privacy policy indicates that your data may be shared with third parties, which is always good to know, your IP address, web interactions, and possibly your sensitive data. Um, and then also screen recordings, etc., as well. Information shared with third party service providers could increase exposure to additional risks. So just when you're doing this type of stuff, be wary, man. Don't don't be all gung ho and being like, oh, it can buy stuff on my account. You can if you want, but then when you get hacked, don't blame me. So anyway, if you want to run this locally, so using your own system, what you could do is you could do just follow the getting started on the, the GitHub repo. You would come here, code, here's the code here, copy that, and then you would open a terminal. There we go, there's the terminal. And we just do a git clone, and then the repo, and then clones into operator. And then from here, we now have this repository, so all these files on our machine. 
If we then scroll down here and do this, paste that in there. Requires NPPM. PNPM. So anyway, for me, I'm going to brew install PNPM. Brew as a package manager. It installs packages which are available on the internet. So for now, we're installing this PNPM. Da, da, da. So that's all good. Right, so then we can do the install again. If you don't have um, Brew, by the way, or you want to install it, so it's called Homebrew. And it allows you to install things like Python, like this, like NPM, whatever it may be. If you're on a Windows machine, you're wanting to look at something like Chocolatey, which is a similar kind of thing. It means it's instead of having to go in here and go um, install PNPM and then go here and then click download and blah, blah, blah. So you can just have it all in one place. So anyway, let me see. First, blah, 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 requires install. Let me see, what's it say? No package.json found. Oh, it's because we need to CD into open operator. So CD is moving in, change directory, then install it from here. And then it'll install it. And then after that, we want to copy our environment variables from .env, for example, to env local. And I'll show you what they look like in the terminal when it loads up. Um, but within that .env .local, this is just a file dot before it means it's like a hidden file because you don't want your your API keys showing everywhere. Because an API key is essentially your key to get into somewhere, so into this service. So to use API uh, OpenAI service, you need the API key. So we're done there. So what we can do is if we do vim dot env dot example, this is what it looks like. The file vim is just a text editor for the terminal. Open, AP, open AI API key, and so in here, what you can do is if you press I, then you can start changing this, or you can just open a text editor, but just so that it's all on one screen for me using it. And then in here, you could just blah blah blah, delete it, delete it, um, and then insert your own API key, which I'll show you how to get that in a minute. And then also, you need a browser based API key, you can just insert that in here. Then we are done, you can just press escape, colon, Q, enter. Um, da, 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 escape, go on, sorry, right, WQ, enter, right, and then quit. Um, if you've made changes and you don't want to save them, you can just do colon Q exclamation mark, and that's quit, don't look for any changes. Um, anyway, so to get your API key, you can go to OpenAI's dashboard here, and you can make an OP, OpenAI API key. And then for browser base, same thing, browser base API key, you would go here and you can sign up and, and get an API key from there. And then when that's done, you would just run it via this and then it would open up here um, to this exact same page like this. And then you can use it there. So that's how to use this new UI agent. As you can see, or AI, U, AI UI agent, I don't know. As you can see, it's brand new two or three days ago. So go have a try, see what it's like. Um, let me know in the comments below because I found that they can be a bit kind of sketchy. So before we go, let's have a quick look here at the operator example. That was, they used Instacart to buy some groceries. So I'm just going to do the same thing. So buy me some groceries from Instacart. We want specifically so, see, soy milk. Porridge, maple syrup, cinnamon. Let's see how we go on. Um, <laughs> because what I'm finding from using these myself is everyone's like, oh my god, it's the new era of AI, it is here. Ah. And I mean, to some degree, kind of, because I mean, essentially what this allows you to do now is to interact with a browser as if it were an API which is something I always wondered why it wasn't so hard anyway. Um, <laughs> obviously, you can tell that I've, I've been a cloud engineer for a little while, so I haven't been coding it, um, these things. But anyway, so the I'd always wondered why can't you use it, but I've seen someone's kind of hot take on LinkedIn where they were saying about how the cool thing is is that you wonder like things like Operator AI and even the, this browser-based uh, open operator, you wonder if they're going to start caching various 
uh, activities and or if they're going to start creating their own types of like APIs that the, the operator will use internally for the commands that it uses to interact with the website, um, which is interesting. So, And I wonder how it's going to affect uh, websites generally. If we're going to have AIs using websites more, I wonder if they'll end up being more human websites and more API-like websites, and if they'll end up changing it. Anyway, how are we getting on here? So, first thing, navigate to Instacart. Second thing, pop up on the Instacart homepage, ask for an email, sign up for delivery. Yep, close this pop up, or enter an email, sign up if you don't. Accept your search for to find groceries, which is soy metal, so allow you to locate the product in that cart. As we can see here, it is actually searching. Um, I don't think I can make it bigger unless I shut down this terminal. Let me see if I can command plus. So I think. Yeah, this is probably as big as it's going to get. You can see it's scrolling around. Being pretty slow. So if you do have really good resources on your computer, you could potentially run this faster. The only problem with running local large language models is that the amount of processing power required is mental. And so then, for you to try and run it, say, on your normal little laptop, or even a decent-ish gaming laptop, the performance you're going to get is just nowhere near the actual API that you pay for. Um, which I noticed, because I'm going to make a video soon on Bolt, which is a, essentially a platform where you write in an idea and it makes an app. And the code editor's there and everything, which is cool. But they've released a Bolt.diy, where you can run it locally, which is amazing. And you can then set it up with... Olama, which runs an LLM locally, and then you get an entire ecosystem of building applications using large language models, all local to your computer, which is cool. But imagine the resources that takes, so it's pretty slow. Um, but as soon as you change like the API key, it's rapid to like open AI or something. Anyway, so it's been searching for soy milk and it's clicked on one. It's still processing. What I'm gonna do now is I can tell this is going to take ages. So I'm going to go get a glass of water and I'll be back when hopefully it'll be done. Oh, never mind. It's going to come and stop the recording. But do I have to? Oh, well, I do have to. <laughs> Debugging connection was closed. WebSocket disconnected. The same thing happened to me when I was testing it yesterday. Um, if you right-click the screen, go to inspect. If you can try and see what the problem is here from, from the console. I had a glance. I don't know. I think it just gets caught up in itself. So anyway, as you can see, it's good to use for little tasks, but as soon as you start giving it complicated tasks, it doesn't really know what to do. Um, Gets itself all caught up in a tizzy. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will be releasing that boat video soon so you can have your own development environment that's completely local. So hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see you later.